letters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry Pesavento. I know, I know. It's not the same thing. We'll do our best. This is trade what you see. The hour trade what you see. And I'll do my best. Uh, the Dow is, uh, this is the futures are at this particular, oh, something to overlap there. Uh, the Dow futures are up only five. S&P is up $1.75. Let me just run the scenario that I'm looking at now. If you're looking at the uh, Tiger TV, you'll see on the left here is the daily chart. Right in the middle is the weekly chart of the E-mini, the June E-mini. We'll have to change the contract very soon. I'll have to re-notate all these things. No problem. We've got the 120-minute chart, and here lies the real issue. This is in a sideways trading band. 2439.75 was the all-time high on the second. <clears throat> Goes to a peak D. Oh, I didn't mention what that is. Uh, Pig D, let me just show you something here, if I can, right there. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Had it already? There it is. Okay. So within the Chapman Wave concept, there's a very simple technique that we use. Hope the chart is still there. There it is. Try to identify the lowest, most obvious low bar and merely count each successively higher peak. When you get to the fourth highest peak, that's called peak D because it's alphabetized from A, goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. On the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. And over the 12 years that I've been here, 13, I don't know, uh, I don't know how many times, hundreds of thousands of times I've showed this uh, particular pattern. And it's at D where you can expect either a recycle to the upside or a possible deep correction, either a correction in time or a correction in price or both. So now let's go to our little patterns that we're looking at. Within the Chapman Wave uh, concept of using time rather than price, we see that the 2439.79 high of the 2nd of June has really been between the 2426s and the 2439s since then. And it's trading in a little rectangle formation. That little rectangle formation, meaning narrow trading bands, uh, support and resistance, can last a lot longer than your patience. And here we are at 2432, 2433, attempting to tr go towards the, the most recent high of 2435.75. So what I said to subscribers to my opening call this morning, I always show the uh, this chart that you're looking at right now, daily, weekly, and 120-minute chart. I always show this to, to give a, a sense of what we're looking at because it trades pretty much 24 hours a day. It really gives a, a, a good feeling for um, what is anticipated because after all, the futures are just that. It is a price objective that is suggesting what the future will hold for the cash position. In this particular instance, up at $1.75, there's a slight upside bias in the cash position. That's the S&P or SPX, S&P 500 index. And on the, on the downside, 24, 26, 25 needs to hold. You might be able to slip down there once, but you just need to, re this is a 120 minute chart, you need to rebound very quickly. So this trading range is active. My thinking here, now we can get to the actual overall thinking, is that we're getting closer and closer to some kind of a top. What we're waiting for, now we can go through all these different things. The QQQ series, I'm going to the cash, we'll go to the NDX one, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, what was it? NQ, uh, in the futures in a moment, has, I'm calling this at least for now a, a leg B, to the upside, it could be an alternate count, a G, but this is uh, right now, 
The technicals are still strong. The stochastics are 96%. That's very good. I'm suspecting that the QQQ series can go a little higher. It has made a peak D in the 120-minute chart, but um, the, the technicals at 81%, the stochastics still good, and the MACD has crossed negative. So we'll see what happens over the period of the day. I suspect that until the QQQ series, that's the PowerShares QQQ Trust series, the SMHs, that's the, the market vectors, semicond sorry, the Van Eck vectors, semiconductor ETF, which I've got in a leg F slash B on the upside. See, they're all kind of doing the same thing with very strong technicals with a hint, with two uh, indicators, technical tools, suggesting we're getting really close to at least a consolidation and a sideways move. I think that we are, we are looking at the 87.79 high of yesterday possibly being taken out, and I'll go through everything in a moment. XLK, which is the other one, so it's the three, it's the three L's that are really important right now. These sectors, the QQQ, which is the embracing the NDX 100, the XLK, which is the S&P Select Spider Fund. I've got it in leg C right now, G slash C. I think it's going to go a little higher. And you've got the SMHs. SMH is the, as I say, the ETF for the semiconductor uh, index. When those start to decline, those three, I want three together. When they start to decline, that's when we're going to see whether the IWM, which to me still looks like it wants to test at 140, at 139.09 right now, wants to test the 141s. 141.82 was the uh, was the high, most recent high in April the 26th, and I think it's going to go to a leg D, and that'll be a D daily and an E weekly into this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, and then I think we we've got to be real careful. And that's what I'm looking for going into Friday, Monday. And then I think we've got a shaky week coming up, worrying about the Fed, which takes me straight to the TLT, which is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF, trading at 125.33, down 19 cents in leg E. Uh, it says you're half long. We are a long position um, uh, in the TLT, in my, uh, my, my subscribers, for my opening call newsletter. Um, we've been there since 123. We're almost, uh, we've almost hit 126 for for the TLT three points up or down. A pretty big, a pretty big move. Um, and I'm suspecting that the TLT is going to tell us a great deal. Now let me show you why. In my weekly chart that I show subscribers in great detail, um, the 32.01 high of the of the week of the 20th of March has seen lower lows and lower highs. And this is going to be the question. And I think that the answer is going to be coming by Wednesday of next week. My thinking here is that the I've considered that the yields, the 30-year, the 10-year, and the five-year yields, that's white is 30-year, brown is the five-year T-note yield, and the cyan light blue is the five-year. I'm suspecting that the TLT is close to some kind of a top and that yields are getting close to some kind of a bottom. And that the Fed probably will be forced to raise rates because of what their mantra, because they've said they're going to do it. And that's going to shake up the market. I'll be back to talk about that. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
that has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. My folks, Basil Chapman, sitting in for Larry Pesavento. Larry will be back tomorrow, Thursday. Um, so we're looking at crude oil down. For, so just to, to review, um, it looks to me like the bond chart and the gold chart are kind of matching. And I'll have a great deal more in my, in my show at the 11 o'clock hour, the Tiger Technicians Hour. I'll just try to get to it now with many of the other questions coming in. But uh, the question about crude oil, see 47.66 down 53. It's stuck in a little bit of a tiny range here with the low on the continuous contract of 46.74 and a high uh, kind of a double top at 47, 48 around about the 4840s. Um, the way that the 120 minute chart is acting right now, I think it needs a little bit more of a pullback, it needs to test 4740s. But it is also within a range with the stochastic and the daily trying, attempting at least to form some kind of a reversal, uh, a, a trend right now. The MACD is still very poor. So I suspect that the, the real issue is, can crude oil close in the next two days above 48? 60. 4840 is the nine period moving average. I want it nicely above that, maybe to start a leg, let's give we could call it a leg B um, in the daily chart, make another little kind of U shaped pattern reversal. If it cannot do that, it's just not a good sign at all because it suggests that if it breaks underneath, if crude oil breaks, it doesn't even have to close it, it just has to go underneath 4674, the low that was established on the 2nd of June. The starting leg D, and that makes this, I put in a left side, right side price time uh, match in the Chapman wave with this uppercase A, straight up, straight down. I call it the Eiffel Tower um, pa pattern. Uh, that's funny because the other day I heard someone, um, I don't often listen to CNBC, and I heard someone talk about Eiffel Tower. I said, Eiffel Tower, he must have got that from me. There's nobody ever that's ever called that. A uppercase A pattern and Eiffel Tower. So that was interesting. 
Um, all right, so we're looking at the low of the 10th of May at 46.35. Um, that's going to be key because a break underneath that, especially if it's in a leg D, suggests that this candle right here, the candle with the low of the 5th of May, 44.10, 47.02 was the high, 44.10 was the low. <clears throat> if the price gets into the wick and holds for, it's a daily chart, so if it holds for three, 120-minute uh, bars, preferably consecutive, but maybe three out of four. What we're looking at is if it goes under 45, you're going to test the low. So this is really an important part. And you know what's very interesting? The XAL, the, the um, airline index, has been making the same inverted pattern. And so we were looking at the arch formation, the lowercase h, well, the XAL is making the cup formation, and it's in this rectangle as well, and it's snuck and closed for two days. It's closed above the left side high of peak D at the 25th of April at 116.09. I now have to call this ABC. This is leg C to the upside. There again, I'm looking at um, slightly higher highs and higher lows, and that suggests to me that leg C in the weekly chart that the airline index, oh, and leg D, finally you got your D in the monthly chart. This, <laughs> as we're getting closer and closer to more and more Ds and, and occasional E in the monthly charts, and it's done so quickly, it's suggesting to me that any pullback coming in June, starting maybe later next week, could turn out to be something quite, could be sharp to the downside using price, not so much time. We'll see. So we'll, we haven't got there yet. Meantime, back at the ranch, I'm calling this a buy mode for the XAL, the ARCA airline index, and it's acting very well. So we're going to be watching this one very closely. Now, let's just go to a couple of things I want to look at. Wheat, dust wheat, nice move up off the bottom, and that is suggesting at 441 and a quarter that if wheat closes above the high of the 22nd of 40, 442 and a half, that's a leg B, and the technicals are going to be confirming the rally, not in the weekly yet. Weekly really needs to get to the 448s, but it makes the 443 and a half, nine period exponential moving average in the continuous contract of wheat really important support. Nice move up in wheat. WASC. Let's go to the C. Uh, is corn continuous? Look at that. Corn has been steadily moving to slightly higher highs and higher lows in a, in a bowl formation. And this is this is this could be a very bullish pattern. This is going to change uh, the outlook for the uh, that is the Thomson Reuters continuous contract, a uh, commodity contract. I just want to do this right now from that low. Okay, I must check to see if it was retested. So corn has a low of 361 on the 27th of March. 361. It tests it and goes to 361 exactly on 21st of April. So great. So this is an up arrow. We've got A, B, C, A, peak A, peak B, peak C, then an inside A and a B minus, another inside A and a B. And now we've got a combined C, which says you should go to a D. Corn is looking very good. Corn looks to me like it wants to test in the daily chart the candle. Oh, my. 389 and, a, and three quarters was the high on the 6th of March. That, to me, uh, would be a very good uh, objective. And the support is at 376 to 374. Nice. Now, high-grade copper, this is going to be very interesting. High-grade copper trading continuous contract at 254 has just been stuck. And I think that it's telling us something that's quite important. If we go to, um, if we consider co uh, copper to be an international benchmark in many ways, um, or maybe a barometer would be a better word, of economic conditions, building, et cetera, around the world, then maybe we've got to look at this and say, you know what? Uh, we're just stuck. We're not breaking down, but we haven't been growing. But if you look at um, this chart right here, uh, this is a triple yield chart I showed you a little earlier. But if you look at this chart of wood, which is the iShares Global and Timber Forestry ETF, possibly making a peak F this week or next week. Um, the high was 61.65 uh, 
on the week of the 2nd of June. And so far this week, we haven't taken that out. I think there's a chance we might, but we haven't yet. And the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, which is directly related to wood, obviously, timber and forestry, um, I, would, I would say that this is going to be a, a key metric for us. And I'm going to be watching this real closely going into Monday's open. Why? I want to see where Friday weekly close is, and I want to see where we start the, the week on Monday. And then, of course, you want to talk about the dollar, and we'll go to gold uh, to talk about it a little bit more. Uh, the dollar is at up 22 cents at 96.81. What's really important about this, you've gone to a, a, a trough C, a leg C, maybe a trough C, and that suggests you should still go to a D. So that says that the dollar still has internal weakness. The weekly chart, leg D, monthly chart made this big arch formation after the double cup formation. So I'm just going to make it real clear. If the dollar breaks under 96 by Monday of next week, Monday, Tuesday of next week, then you should see gold. Now I can get to gold and talk a little bit more about it. Gold is in leg C, possibly a peak C today with a high yesterday so far. We haven't taken out that high. I'll talk about this pattern, and I'll talk about why it's very important to look at it in the context of where gold has been, and, oh, it sounds like gold is green in uh, uh, London. Anyway, where gold has been, and we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail. When we get back, we'll talk about gold and silver. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletter. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Hi, everyone. We're back. Uh, Basil Chapman singing for Larry Pesavento. Larry will be back tomorrow. My show is usually the Tiger Technicians Hour, 11 o'clock till 9. And my service is the opening call. A very detailed uh, newsletter comes out every day. I start sending out my charts uh, to my site uh, starting at 6.30, 7 o'clock, anytime uh, very early in the morning. Starts with the Dow chart, the Dow daily, Dow 120-minute chart. Then you go to the overview, and then I send out the futures, uh, the e-mini futures, an assessment of what I'm looking for, and uh, we go on from there. Uh, different charts of positions we have, we're looking at, and then my trader's corner goes out at about 8.35 every morning, and that updates uh, what we have, why we have it, and plus other uh, Indices that we might not have, but I always follow them. The, GL, the GLD, I actually do the GDX. That's the gold miners. I do the TLT. We do add that. Uh, and whatever is important. Diamonds, spy, Qs, etc. The Dow's up 28 at uh, 21,165. S&P's up 283 at 2432. Comp index is up 15 at 62.90. And you've got... Um, the euro right now, the euro dollar currency pair trading at 1.123. I have a question for my, for, this is my own question. I, I would not be surprised. I've got this as an F slash B, an alternate count. But you see the MACD, Larry doesn't use these tech, technical tools. I use them. He has other beautiful, beautiful instruments that he uses. So I love these as well. And the MACD is, is negative. The stochastic's at 89%. That's good. And that's what's holding it up. It's holding above the black line, which is the nine period exponential moving average. I suspect that there will be slightly higher prices to come. Here's the weekly chart. I'm expanding it. See this cup formation? It could form another U-shaped pattern right here if there is strength in the dollar. We'll talk about that in a moment. But in the meantime, the MACD and stochastic are really strong. And this H pattern, I drew here's the template I drew a long time ago. The lowercase h goes to lowercase m. Once that m is tested with a break to the downside, if the technicals are still strengthening and not weakening, it means there's a, there's a good chance that the, this pattern, whatever you're following, there's the EUR, USD, currency, euro dollar currency pair, could rally all the way to the next most important peak on the left, but even test the, all, the, the, the recent H and M tops that were made. So the, so the levels to watch will be um, 1.129, uh, that's the high of November, then 1 to 1.136 August of last year high. But the real thing is, if, there, if, this, if the technicals keep improving, the euro dollar currency could push uh, into the 140s, and that's going to be important. Support right now is at 1.10 in the weekly chart, but most importantly, it's the daily chart that says, how does the euro dollar currency pay? handle any pullback under 1.119 because of the test of the, 30, the 30th of May low of 1.110. That, that, that's what you can expect with a rectangle pattern. But my eye says, hey, why not draw the oval pattern because there could be a rollover or a breakout, and that oval pattern will give you the sense of if there's a break to the upside above the high of the 2nd of June, above one point. One, two, eight, four. That's going to, I have no choice but to call that probably a leg C, and that says you should go to a D. That matches all the other indices that we're looking at. I'll explain what we're looking at because I'm going to go to the USD JPY. We'll come back to gold in a minute. This is all related. Gold is, sorry, the USD, the Japanese yen, dollar currency pair, US dollar currency pair, made the lowercase h and then plummeted below. And that makes the left side, right side price time match of the gap right there between the low of the 24th of April, 109.65, and the day before the 21st, and it must have been a weekend, um, of 109.42, and we're right into that. We've actually taken it out. We've filled the gap. This is going to be quite important on a short-term basis because the technicals are still very weak. So just on a short term, my eye says that the USD JPY is going to test the 200 period exponential moving average of the weekly chart of 108.54 sometime over the next couple of weeks. Now we can go to the dollar and we're related to gold. The dollar uh, just at this point is only up 16 cents. The technicals are really struggling to find some kind of footing. It would take a move into the 9730s, 9750s to really say that the trajectory on the upside for the dollar has changed. It could be elevated somewhat.
But in the meantime, we just say stuck in a range for the next three to four sessions going into maybe Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. That takes us to gold. Now, the question about gold is this. Down $5 at 1292.2. Fabulous move um, from the low that was made in 1220 area. But it is underneath the peak G high that was made at 1300.70 at on the 17th of April. So we went to 30, we went to 1298.8 uh, yesterday, and we haven't taken it out. If, in fact, there's a break, a sharp break in gold to the upside, and that would mean a move into the 1320s, that would be above. It will start leg D in the weekly chart going back into the channel. That's very good. It start leg C in the, in the monthly. And what it does, and I'm, 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 I'm going to take this just until next Wednesday, Wednesday a week, when the Fed makes its decision. I'm looking at this and I'm suggesting that there's a chance that the gold contract will be in leg maybe E on the upside in the in the daily, could even be an F, and the, the weekly will be in D. And the TLT, which right now is down 32 cents, and gold, which have both had a very, very strong counter trend move, that's going to be the test. Because if the Fed raises rates, we don't know exactly what happens always because it's, it's always something a little different each time that things are done. But if the Fed rates rates, we might start to see that the rate, let me go back to this chart right here, that you see, we've been in this for the 30 year. We've been here many times over the years, many years. If you're looking at, you know, let's get this horizontal line for the 10 year yield. We've been here many times, or, you know, to 2013. We, you can go back even if we squash this. Yeah, look at that. That line, you can see the line keeps going back. So we've been there. If you look at the five year, there's nothing unusual about where we are right, right now. Look right there. There's the that's the horizontal line for the five year. We've been here. So it's the trajectory is one thing. The actual price movement. And my thinking here is that there's we might find that if the semiconductors and the and the the text sector and the QQQ start to decline coming next week, we might find that the Fed has in fact raised rates based on some criteria that is not current and that the market is going to say, oops, um, not a good time, at least for a short period, it's going to be stumbling. And that could impact the market on a short term basis. The reason why we are long are almost and actually we are totally long in our in our portfolio. The reason being, I believe that we've got until next week to conclude. And here I go through these things one at a time. Uh, let's see. Uh, question, Basil, on the triple yield. Any thought on yield compression, five year versus 30 year? You know, I do work on that, Mr. Bull. I don't I don't see it right now um, as an issue that I want to, I, that I see anything yet, but I believe that's going to happen. I agree with, that's a good point, and I agree with you. We'll be back, we'll talk about, I want to talk about the New York Stock Exchange. Larry loves to talk about that, we'll do that as well. As soon as I get back, Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry President. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with hosts Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN show and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. So let's do this. We're going to look at the NYA.X. That's the New York Stock Exchange, very broad stock exchange. Made a peak E in the Japan wave in the daily. It's in a leg E slash B in the weekly with the technicals just, I mean, we're going to see on Friday whether the MACD can actually cross positive. The stochastic has gone to 81%, and that is good. And a leg D in the monthly. And now let me just show you. Keep your eye on this right side. That's a D in the New York Stock Exchange. This is an E in the monthly chart of the Dow. This is a D in the monthly chart of the S&P. The only divergence is that this is only a C in the power shares of the trust QQQ trust series. That suggests there should still be a D. So that means that the Qs still have internal residual, residual strength that any pullback at 143.42, the nine period moving average in the monthly is way down at 131. That's 13 points is a 10 percent correction. 138.72 is the weekly support and 142.12 to 140.36 is the um, shorter term uh, support. OK, now what we're looking at, and this is going to be very interesting because you've got the XMI, no one talks about the XMI, I used to follow it in great detail, used to trade options and stuff on it, is trading in the monthly chart just at a peak D, just underneath the 2150.860 March all-time high, ARC, a major market index. The reason why I like it, it used to be the Dow actually does this very well now. It used to be a perfect mix of defensive, aggressive, cyclical uh, stocks, like it's only 20 stocks, but like the Dow. Um, now the Dow is really accepted as maybe too, too many um, financials. It's got, uh, uh, it's got uh, Visa, Mastercard, is a Bank of America, uh, American Express. So you're you're looking at um, uh, the financials being overweight, but overall with a Caterpillar, a Cisco. CVX, Exxon Mobil, Apple, Boeing. This is a really good mix in the uh, in the in the Dow at this particular point. As I say, slightly overweight, which is going to be to the Dow's benefit when the big move comes later in the year. The big move. 
up, that is. All right, so let, let's just go on. And if you look at the IWM, that's been lagging, but right now it's up 17.17. Uh, the Dow's up 0.17, the S&P's up 0.17. They're all uh, in the same category. I kind of like it. Um, I, I want to see the leg D made in the in the monthly chart, the iShares Russell 2000. So, okay, enough with that. Now, a couple of questions. We're always looking at the XLF. XLF right now is trading up 0.26%. It's at 2345, up six cents, and it's all within a range. And I suspect that by um, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, oh, it could go a little higher. I'm not sure it's going to break above. 2346. However, before that, however, if this is the anticipation that yields, let's just go to the T and X for now, just on a very separate basis, going from the daily, which has made a trough D if there's no new low today. Stochastic finally is trying to turn up at 13%. NAC is trying to find some support. It isn't anywhere close to where it was when the last trough was made, trough F, at on the 18th of April, the low of 2177 in the 10 year. Uh, T note yield. So uh, what we're looking at, what we're looking at is that peak D that was made in the pullback has broken to a new a lower low, and in the monthly, in the weekly chart, the technicals are still quite poor. That makes the next week's worth of trading really important in the TNX. My thinking here is that on Thursday or Friday of next week, that's five six trading days in five six trading days time. If the 2242 area is 2216 to 2242 area, that's 2.24 percent is being tested instead of 2.12 or something like that, lower lows. Um, that's going to be a change of trend, and I think that's going to spook the market somewhat. Question, Stephen, I mentioned in the den that, that um, the good point was made. Let me just see if I can find it. Basil, and if the Fed raises rates, which they will, and you were a holder of long-term sovereign debt with negative yields, such as the over ten trillion being held now. How comfortable, how comfortable would you be continuing to hold those negative yield bonds, albeit they are long-term? Well, that's really the point. When it's very long-term, it takes a lot to shake people out. They get very nervous, but they don't actually, especially long-term. You don't make moves based on a few days or even a few points. So I think it's going to take more to, to, to have that. Not only that, in Europe, they're always going to be slower. They're always going to do things uh, after America does it. So we'll see how they what they do with the yields, OK? Um, so those are the things that I wanted to talk about. More importantly, I think on a short-term basis, let me just go to this. The SMHs, the semiconductors, are squeaking to a new high today, a new all-time high. I, we decided, I did, decided um, a little while back that I was going, I'm done with trying to short this. I'm going to wait very patiently. The st when a stochastic stays flat in the 94% or higher area, uh, to go short, you have to put, time it perfectly because you're timing, not just, you're basing it on price, and then the technicals have to follow. And that says that the price really has to have a very big move to, to, to drag the technicals lower. I have two indicators that are suggesting we are really close to some kind of a congestion period, a digestive period, a, a sideways, at best, a sideways move, but probably at worst, a sharp pullback uh, in the semiconductors. And as soon as they come down, I think the general market becomes vulnerable. Okay. So um, what, what I've found, at least for now, for subscribers, is that just we have positions. And we actually have quite a few low price positions, which are doing very nicely. And the reason being is that if they have the same patterns as high priced and they have the same potential for percentage gains, I would rather be putting less money to work now when I'm getting so close to what I think is going to be at least a, a sudden short term top uh, than to be too aggressive with too much money in place. And that means we're trying to build a nice cash position. And you know what? If the market actually starts moving higher on Thursday and Friday, we can deal with that very nicely. If it moves lower, we'll be ready. And that's, I think, positioning yourself for a change of pace. Now, remember, I like to always say that any major announcement should not change the trend. Over the decades that I've been doing this, it is very seldom 
that you get a fed I, I i can recall maybe two three times over all the years with the m1 and m2 and m3 and then the uh, uh interest rates and uh changing from thursdays to wednesdays and we, we, we used to have fridays for the job report they are not trend turners they are trend confirmationers most of the time but every once in a while you are coming to a time and price conclusion at least for me that says we might get a turnaround maybe early next week which is confirmed by the fed statement or um it doesn't have any effect it just keeps the uptrend going and i i'm thinking that we're going to get some kind of a turn and the turn might be the consolidation we've been waiting for eh, that's my thinking all right Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. We'll be back straight after these messages. Dow's up to 32, S&P's up 3, and the uh, pump index is up 12. Oh, with six up. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Uh, we're looking at the E-mini up at $1.75. I, I can't remember now if I showed this. I know I showed it in the, in the den earlier on. 
So what? how important are those peak Ds that I talk about all the time? Remember, what's the objective of the Chapman Wave methodology is to get you at least to a D, and then we see what happens there. That's the objective. Let's move that away. So there was a peak D right there at 4.50 uh, on the 6th at uh, 24.33. Pulls back. Pulls back to the 24.26 area. Then it goes peak A, B, C, and then finally goes D. And the D at um, 24.35.75 at 14.40, on the 6th, uh, pulls back sharply. And then it goes into a, these channels, these slightly, with a slight degree to the upside, channels, if they go to a D, it could go a little higher, but it's invariably going to come back into the body. Wow, it does. It goes to a D and it goes, uh, it squeaks to an E and then pulls back sharply. And it goes from the 24.33, 50-ish area down to the low that was made at uh, 3.20 this morning, 24.28.25. And then it goes, what? It goes peak ABC. Wait, it was the same angle, same same channel. So the channel goes to peak ABC. We've just in a leg D right now, pull back sharply. And the channel, if you look at what I like to do, is to do an, a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. A close in uh, there's news coming out at 10 o'clock, whatever that news is. If it pulls back sharply, uh, yes, I did catch the music theory program, the Beatles Strawberry Field album, which is really interesting. <laughs> that was this question of the day. 24.30.50, a break under that. In fact, a break under 24.29 says, well, we're going to retest the 24.26 area. But a push into the 24.36 by three minutes past 10 will be very positive. We will continue pushing slightly higher, higher highs and slightly lower lows, slightly higher lows and slightly higher highs for the rest of the day. Watch the VIX. I don't think the VIX is going to do very much right now. VIX at this point is down 24 cents at 10.21. I think it's a stack here for a little bit longer, another few days. I think next week the VIX starts to become really important. We'll see. So uh, Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Persevento. Larry will be back tomorrow. Hey, stay tuned. I've got my show at 11 o'clock Eastern time. I hope you can join me. Stay tuned. You've got Tom O'Brien and Tommy coming right up. And it's a pleasure being here. I'll be back tomorrow. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.